Hi, in this video, let's see how to display the real data like server details and user details. Earlier, we wrote one condition. If the message content is ping, exclamatory mark ping, then we are going to return pong as a reply from bot. So now we'll keep one more condition. Whenever a user asks for the server info, we'll reply back the server information. So for that, I'm keeping one more if else condition. So I need to check the message content if the user asks for the server info, like uh, if we type server info, then we need to reply back the server information. For that, we know we need to use message.channel.send to send the message. But we need to know what, what details we need to give. So if, we, if anyone asks user server info, what should be replied? We have the only option we have is message. We have a message object. When this event occurs, we'll be having this message object. Through this message object only, we can reply back the server details. So now what details I can reply back? So for that, you need to go back to the discord.js. This is a library we have used. In this, you go to the documentation. In the search, this is an entire documentation search. Here you can search the message. So it gives entire message results. In the first time clicking as a class. In this message class, you have n number of properties and methods. In this way, you need to go into the documentation and you need to search for the properties which you need. And here the properties and the methods would be like this. In discord.js, we'll be calling the server as guild. So you go to the guild. So this is a guild. This is known as a server. In the guild, we need to go to the type again. Again, I'm uh, drill downing into the guild. Here you have these many properties for the server. So we'll be using the number count and name of the server. We'll try to reply back when someone asks the server information, we'll try to reply back with the member count, how many members are available and name of the server. So you can use a number of all these properties as per your need. Let me go back and reply back. Here, we are using template literal. So this is not a single quote. This is known as a template literal. Uh, you mean uh, this key you can find below the escape key in the keyboard. Now I'm uh, using this. Why I'm using this template literal, I will uh, show you. So we need to print the name of the variable here. I mean, uh, the variable is string uh, server name. So I need to keep that right. So in this way, dollar flower base open and close. Here you can print the variable names. Like I'm using message dot. We discussed that the server is uh, called as guild here. And guild dot name so now we'll be getting the server name and backslash in in the new line we'll click the total members how many total members are available in this server so for that again i'm opening the dollar because this is a variable value we don't know this value so this this variable values i'm keeping that in dollar and flower base this is known as a te template literal again i need to go to message dot guild dot member count so you have, again, if you get any doubt in the properties, go back to the documentation and check. This is the member count. So I'm typing that member count. So if you run it, so I'm going back and I'm running. I will type as I need a server info. If I click server info, see uh, the bot is written, written, returning me the server name as discord bot server and total members as two. So this is how we can extract the real time server data. So in the same way we can do with the client information like user information as well. For that, we need to create one more if else statement where we need to write the message content. If that is user equal to the user info. So when we type user info, then we need to return back the user information. For that we wrote one more if else. So for this also we know we'll be replying back with the message channel dot send. Here I'm using a template literal. We know a uh, message has a guild property in which we have name and member count. Whereas 
how to know the user info information i can go back to the documentation and go back to the message main class in the main class message main class you can find out here the user informations are known as the author user is called as an author you need to go to the author and e author is of type user again if you drill down into the user you can find out the properties so these many properties are available for that user you can use any of the property i will try to use the id of the user and at what time it was created so we'll use both these two so for that user id dollar message dot author because we are need to extract the user information by using the author author property in that author property we will be having all these user properties so author dot id and in the next line we'll try to print user create created it which will be created at message dot author dot you can use any any of the properties as per your need based upon our business conditions our requirement we can use so here i need to use as a created act so let me check this i'm going back to the server and clicking user info let's check this yep we, the bot replied back giving us the user id and when it was created so this is how we can extract the real time data so also here we need to tell one more point so we need to discuss the bot should not reply back to his own messages so for example uh, let me modify this to ping so once uh, i enter ping if again the bot replies back to ping okay uh, I, if i enter ping it will reply reply back me as ping so now let me show you what happens so now i am entering as ping if i enter ping bot will reply back as a ping and bot will also react to its own message see if you observe it thinks that someone has sent me ping and again it it will reply back to that same ping message that's the reason you are getting a infinity loop loop like this see that's the reason it is getting an infinity loop so how to avoid this so let me show you that so for that at the initial phase at the starting itself we need to do like this like we need to do message dot we need to find out the author if the author is bot so if the bot is the author then we need to return back in sense bot should not listen to its own messages whenever it it comes to reply it needs to return back bot should not result to its own messages like if i click ping if again i click ping so now if you see it it only replied me back once it is not looping up because it is not listening to its own message so that's the logic we wrote here we are checking if the reply or if the text is printed by bot then return him early so no need to check any of the conditions so that's the reason it comes to here if any other author pings ping then it will reply back to ping and once it comes to ping the bot will not reply to that ping because bot has typed that so it will not return back in sense bot should not reply back to its own commands so that's what the condition we wrote here so in the next video we'll check about the command arguments